Welcome to this video on the selection of a healthcare decision maker. I'm going to talk about how and who you should pick to be your healthcare decision maker, as this is a little trickier than it appears. Before I dive in, let me just say that Regina and I have taken great pains to try and not give you repetitive information in this module. However, it is possible that we trip up and repeat something. We're hoping you will forgive us for that and accept the occasional repetition as a way to hear yet again an important piece of this topic. Have you ever considered who you would want to have making healthcare decisions for you in the event you were not able to make them for yourselves? If you haven't, now is a really good time to stop and think about this. Things happen, life happens, and suddenly there are twists and turns that no one anticipated. Taking care of this before it's a crisis is the only way to set yourself up for the kind of medical care you want. A first step in this process is picking that one person you trust, someone who knows you well, and someone who will step up and speak for you if you can't. It can't be someone under the age of 18, and there are some other restrictions, in the United States at least, that I will cover in an upcoming slide. This person is called a healthcare proxy, also called a healthcare agent, medical decision maker, or even a medical durable power of attorney for healthcare. This is the one person you would choose for the doctors to talk to if you were too sick to talk to them yourself. This proxy can talk to your doctors and make healthcare decisions about treatment. When should you pick someone? Now. And review this decision annually and more frequently if needed. Doing this at the same time every year will help you remember to do it. Maybe you want to do this at the beginning of each year. Also do it at a major life event, like when you get married or divorced, when you have children, or again, even when you are going away on a big trip. Who should you pick? Being a healthcare decision maker is not for everyone. You want a proxy who can make decisions in tough situations, someone who knows you well and knows what is of value to you, and someone who won't let their emotional connection to you get in the way of them being able to stand up for what you want. Take my friend for example. She told me picking her ex-husband would not be a good idea. And her parents have died, and her sisters are too emotional for this job, so she picked her brother. He is strong in times when life is challenging. He knows and respects her wishes. If an end-of-life situation arose, she feels very comfortable that he would carefully consider what she would want and make decisions based on those preferences. Making this kind of decision will be difficult. Asking yourself these questions might help you narrow the field. Will the person you are considering to be your healthcare proxy make decisions that are in line with your wishes? Even if their own wishes are different from yours, will the person be able to put aside their emotional connection to you and make the hard decisions based on your wishes? Will the person be comfortable speaking up on your behalf? This takes some courage. Talking to doctors in white coats who always seem to know what's right can be intimidating. Will the person ask questions until he or she has a good understanding of what's going on? Again, this takes some gumption. Will the person be good at making decisions and changing circumstances? Sometimes the decisions are relatively easy to make, such as starting antibiotics. But sometimes conditions change quickly, and bigger questions such as, do you want us to insert a feeding tube, need to be made. Having someone who knows your preferences and then applies them to your medical care is invaluable. In my opinion and experience, it's best to choose just one person to speak for you. Naming more than one person can create confusion and controversy at a time when things are already difficult. In all states in the United States, you can name the alternative proxy if the primary proxy is unable to serve. You might feel obligated to pick a family member like a spouse or an adult child, but if this person is not going to speak for your wishes, it's best not to pick them, and that's okay. The most important thing is picking someone you feel comfortable will speak for you in the manner you would speak for yourself. Be sure to tell your family ahead of time who your proxy is and expect them to push back a bit. You can say, I pick so-and-so because he or she could speak for me without the emotional conflict my family may face. I saw this happen recently, so thought I would mention it in this video. One factor that should be considered is whether or not this person benefits under your will.
It's preferable to name someone who does not benefit as their decisions, especially as you become more vulnerable, can be affected by their interest in the outcome. I just saw this happen with an elder friend who was moved away from her community in order to preserve the estate for her son, the healthcare decision maker, instead of having her house sold to pay for the life that she wanted to live. People who cannot serve as proxy vary by state, but in general these are youth under the age of 18, staff in the health care facility where the seriously ill person is being cared for, or a member of your current health care team, such as your doctor or nurse. Be sure to check your state rules. As I mentioned before, be sure to check your proxy selection at least annually. Life happens and you might want to change your proxy for any number of reasons. Perhaps your proxy moved away. Maybe the relationship with the proxy changed, or maybe the proxy has died. It's okay to change your proxy for any reason, and it's simple. Just complete a new form and shred the old one. The document with the most recent date is the one that is honored. If appropriate, tell your old proxy that you are changing this selection. Simply say, I've been giving this some thought and have decided to change my proxy. Thank you so much, but I won't need you to take on this responsibility for me. So you have selected a potential proxy. Now what do you do? You really need to talk to this person and fill them in on the importance of this role. Ask them if they would be comfortable taking this on for you. Make sure they understand that you're asking them to take the time to understand what your values are and that in the case of a medical situation where you could not speak for yourself, that they would step in and speak for you. Make sure they understand that they would have the legal power and responsibility to make medical decisions for you if you're unable to make them yourself. Allow them to think about it or even to say no. This is an important role and not everyone is comfortable fulfilling this position. If they do agree, then make time for the two of you to sit and talk about what you would want if things should turn badly and your health warrants their assistance and intervention. Give your proxy and everyone else appropriately, for that matter, a copy of the MDPOA and any other forms you've filled out. Make sure your doctor knows the names and contact information for your proxy, and at the same time, make sure your proxy has your doctor's name. I hope this discussion has encouraged you to give this matter some serious thought while you are healthy and to take steps now towards putting into place the one person who knows and understands you, someone who will protect you and look out for your interest if the worst circumstance happens with your health.